hello guys welcome back again to my youtube channel in today's video i'll be showing you how to use your measuring tool your scale your measuring spoons and your measuring cup they are perfect way to do it so as not to distort your recipe if this sounds like what you are interested in if this sounds like what you would like to listen to please subscribe to this channel like this video and share it to somebody who needs it my name is abby let's start this video for the purpose of this video, these are the measuring tools that are essential to your baking journey. There are two types of scales. You have the digital scale, which is this, and the analog scale, which is this. So I'm, I'm going to show you how to use the digital scale first before using the analog scale. The analog scale is quite technical. That's why I'm going to start with the digital scale because that one is very fast and very easy to use. This digital scale actually came with this bowl here. So you can use any bowl. It, you don't have to use this bowl on it. You can use your mixer bowl, you can use your plastic bowl, you can use your metal bowl on it. You can just take this off. So to use your scale to get the best out of your measurement, the first thing to do is to turn on the scale. Before someone starts asking me at the comment section, what's the name of your scale? It's called Camry. That's the name of my, the, the Camry, you know, as in Camry, like car Camry. Yes, that's the brand. So I'm going to turn on my scale. Depending on the kind of digital scale you might buy, the function might be different. But this bowl, as long as I turn it on with a bowl on top of it, it would be on zero. The fan is actually pushing the bowl, so it fluctuates sometimes. So if I take it off, that simply means this bowl is 212 grams. But if I put it on, it would be on zero. If I turn it off, then I take off the bowl and turn it on. It would be on zero because it would automatically minus and everything that is on top of it while turning on so if i put this bowl on top of it it will it will give me the measurement of the bowl back so that's just basically how this works so now there are ways you can use this if if i didn't turn it on with the bowl on top of it if i put it on top of it now it starts giving me the measurement of the bowl. Please don't mind the fluctuation in the numbers. The fan here is very powerful and it's actually pushing the bowl. So it's not this, um, this inefficient. So now that the bowl is on top of it, what I'm going to do to make it zero, before I start adding anything into this, is to turn this into zero by clicking the the reset button it's written here z versus t but to me it's a z stroke t but to me that's a reset button so it resets to zero but if i want to see the measurement of the the bowl on top i'll just click it again to show me but if i want to turn it to zero it will just be zero so no matter what I add into the bowl, that only what I add into the bowl is what's measuring at this point. I don't know if you get me. Now, this scale is on grams. This scale is on grams. And, and I, if you are in countries where you use pounds or ounce, to measure you can change it to whatever you like in Nigeria here we use gram and kg most of the time so now I want to convert this to uh, uh, to ounce can you see so it has changed to ounce so no matter what I add if I keep adding I just added my cup into the bowl. So if I keep adding, it will keep measuring 
what's inside. Now I'll move on to the um, to the analog scale. This one is quite technical. When you're working with the uh, with the manual stroke, it's not manual, analog scale. You have to be very careful. Whenever you have measured and you are not sure if you set your analog to zero, you have to re-measure. If you have one ounce of doubt of the fact that you have not set your analog to zero, it's best to re-measure again. Because you don't know if it's on 1000 before you put the, you don't know if it's on 200 before you put in what you wanted to put. It. So it's good to set your analog scale to zero. The way to set this scale, you cannot, you cannot set it from the side like I'm doing. You have to stay heads on like the camera is right now. As you can see, it's not on zero, it's on, if, um, if the first line here is 200, then 200 div uh, divided into five because we have four spaces inside and 200 is the fifth one. That means 200 divided into five is 40. So that means each line you have here is 40. So the fifth one would make it 200. So since the camera is head on to the, the, um, to the analog scale, that means the scale is on 40. So it's good to actually set it to zero. Now you can see that it's on zero. This is, this is just basically how to set your scale to zero. So now, before you set your scale to zero, you have to establish the bowl or the plate that you want to use for, this, for the purpose of your cake making process. It could be any bowl, it doesn't necessarily have to be the bowl that came with the, with the scale. So after placing the bowl on the scale, then you can now set to zero. If you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you are just a home baker, as in you bake for your children, you bake for your family, this kind of scale is perfect for you. You can also up, up your game by buying a digital scale. But really and truly, as you can see, it's not exactly on zero because this camera is head on like facing the scale directly so i will move it backwards a little now it's on zero so whatever i add into this bowl would be the measurement of the of the of whatever is inside the scale which is uh 40 40 40 uh, 160 this is 160. So that's how to use the analog scale. And there are some cases you do not want to put a bow on the analog scale. I'll show you how to do that. Now I'm gonna take off this bow and whatever is on it. Now if you don't want to use a bow on the analog scale, you just want to measure directly on this thing over here. Sure, you can. You can also do that on the digital scale. You just remove everything and set to zero. Reset it to zero. Now it's heads on zero. <clears throat> so I want to measure this. It's on 160. So that's how to measure with your analog scale. Now I'm going to move on to my measuring cup and measuring spoon. This is the kind of measuring cup and measuring spoon that most beginner bakers start with because it's cheap it's user friendly it's accurate and um, it's a let me know it's what cheap it's affordable this is what i started my baking journey with which is 250 ml this is my half cup and it's 125 ml this is my one third cup which is 80 ml this is my quarter cup and it's um 60 ml it's my one eighth cup and it is um 30 ml. 
same thing goes for all this just that they are all the same color same thing same rule apply same measurement these are my measuring spoons so i'm going to start with the one tablespoon this is my one tablespoon and uh, it is 15 ml in liquid this is my half tablespoon which is 7.5 ml this is my one teaspoon which is 5 ml three teaspoon make one tablespoon so in case you want to do shortcut then this is my half teaspoon which is 2.5 ml this is my quarter teaspoon which is equal to 1.5 ml same thing applies to this so i'm just going to show you how to use your measuring cup and your measuring spoon over here i have flour using my favorite um, measuring cup and spoon now i'm going to show you how to the right way to measure your ingredient using cup we have shown you how to use a scale to measure now i'm going to show you how to use cup to measure if you've watched up to this level that means you like my content please don't forget to subscribe <laughs> don't forget to subscribe so now you can measure like this but while measuring like this do not do this do not press down it's a no-no if I weigh this compared to something that was measured just like this there's a very very big difference so now to measure you can do it this way a little because some things clog together then you measure please note that you might have sifted your flour this is flour i'm using flour for this uh, illustration this is what i do then i smoothing it i level it off then i pour into what i want to use are you seeing what i'm doing that is what i do you can go like this What I do is I hit it twice, then I level it. Please remember, do not press your flour or whatever you're measuring. Now, for that of spoon, let's assume this is baking powder or baking soda or baking. The same thing applies. Do not heap it. Do not press it. You level it. Because the reason why I heat it sometimes like this, sometimes there might be air somewhere and the flour has not entered there. So I, or the baking powder or baking soda has not entered there. So I just heat it twice. Then I, I level it up. So that's just basically it for how to measure your uh, ingredient thank you for watching guys hope you enjoyed this video i did i enjoyed making it if you like this video please subscribe to my youtube channel share this video on your social media platform and um, i'll see you in my next video bye bye for now